Okay, now how do you find an inverse if it actually exists if you're given the function algebraically? We know how to do it if we have a visual picture. We sort of reflect over the y equals x line. But how do you actually perform this task if you're just given the function algebraically? Well, it's actually sort of fun. Well, I think it's fun. I'm going to use the y notation instead of f of x for a second. But you could think of this as f of x equals 4x minus 3. But remember, it's the same thing as y equals 4x minus 3. This is the old notation, in fact. It's really easy. All you do if you want to untangle this is just flip the roles of x and y. Remember, it's a reflection over the y equals x line. So all I'm going to do is literally flip x and y roles and then solve back for y. If I can solve back for y and I get a function, then that function is the inverse. If I can't solve it for y, then it has no inverse. So for example, what I do here is I flip the roles of x and y. So notice this is not going to be the same equation. I'm going to change the equation, but I just flip roles. So now I see x equals 4y minus 3. And now I just solve for y. If I solve for y, I bring the 3 over. So I have 4y equals x plus 3. And then I divide both sides by 4. And I see y equals x plus 3 over 4. Since I was able to solve it, I see this is the inverse. So if this were f of x, I now see this is f inverse of x. Pretty cool. That's all there is to it. Let's try some more. So suppose I'm given the function f of x, and I'll write it as y equals minus 6 over x. What would the inverse be? I just flip the roles. I take every x, make it a y. Take every y, make it an x. So I'd see x equals minus 6 over y, and now solve for y. How would you solve for y here? Well, there are a variety of things you could do. I guess you could cross multiply. Think of x as being x over 1. Uh, the other thing you do is multiply everything through by y. I think I'll do that. I'll multiply every single thing through by y. So on this side, I see y x. And on the other side, I just see minus 6. Now I divide both sides by x. And I see y equals minus 6 over x. That's a perfectly fine function. And so in fact, that would be the inverse function of this function. So if f of x equals minus 6 over x, it turns out the inverse is uh, itself, which is right. And you can check that. Compose the two functions, you see you just get x. All right, let's try another one. So f of x, but again, I'm going to write that just temporarily as y equals x squared. So what do you do for the inverse? You just switch the roles. So x equals y squared. And now you want to solve for y. Well, what do you have to do? Well, I take square roots, but I got to take plus or minus the square roots. Uh-oh. Whoops. This is not a function. Because I have two values. If I put in one x value, this wants to spit out two y values. Well, that's not a function. So in fact, this cannot be solved for one particular value, given one x value. And so in fact, this is not invertible. And of course, that's just a good old-fashioned parabola. And I already told you that that can't be inverted. So in fact, we're just seeing another example of it. Up next, we'll try even some more exotic functions, switching x and y, solving for y, seeing if we can do it. I'll see you there.